Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. It's a brand new year, it's now 2023, and after a short break, I'm ready to get back into recording my tutorials. A couple new things, my green screen's back up, so I'll be able to show my face a little more in my videos. And I guess the other new thing are my plans for the new year. I have a couple exciting things coming down the track, and I'll be announcing them in future videos. Now for this lesson, I have a brand new mechanic that I've been working on creating, and it's a color picker menu option. I first created this mechanic as a feature for my campfire game. Here you can see it working, where I'm able to pick and choose different colors to customize my avatar even further. I've since packaged this mechanic up and added it to my store where you can download it for free, and I've left a link in the description below. Now this plugin's real simple. First off, we have a script, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. All right, so the first thing that we need to do inside this script is include some namespaces. The first is using unityengine.events. The next is using unityengine.eventsystems. And the last is using unityengine.ui. Now I've added the script to our own namespace. So if you ever want to reference the script or what's inside the script, you'll need to include our namespace at the top of your scripts. But the next thing that I have inside the script are my variables. And the first variable is a public unity event of type color. And I've called this color picker event. We then have some serialized fields. The first is a texture 2D, which I've called color chart. The next is a game object, which I've called chart. We then have a rec transform called cursor, an image called button, and another image called cursor color. After which we'll want to create a public void function, which I've called pick color. And the parameter for this function needs to be a base event data, which is called data. This is because this function is going to be added to an event trigger. Inside this function, we want to convert our data parameter into a pointer event data. So I have pointer event data pointer equals data as pointer event data. Once we've done this, we want to set the position of our cursor to the position of our mouse. And so I have cursor.position equals pointer.position. Next, we want to get the color from our color chart based on the position of our mouse. And so I have a variable of type color, which I'm calling picked color, and I'm setting it equal to our color chart, which is our texture 2D dot get pixel. And this function requires a parameter for the x position and the y position, and these both have to be integers. And so I have an int in parentheses to cast this value as an integer. And in parentheses, I have cursor.localposition.x, and I'm multiplying it by color chart, which is our texture 2D, dot width, divided by transform dot get child zero. This is because our color chart is actually the first child underneath this script object, dot get component, rec transform, dot rect, Dot width. For the y parameter, we're doing the same thing, but instead of x, we're doing y, and instead of width, we're doing height. So I have int and then cursor.localposition.y multiplied by colorchart.height divided by transform.getchild0 dot get component rec transform dot rec dot height. This will basically make it so that we can change the width and height of the actual color chart in our scene and it'll still accurately pick the right color based on the player's mouse position. Once we have the color, we want to set the color of the button for opening the color picker, the color of the cursor, and we want to pass that color to our Unity event. So I have button.color equals picked color, cursorcolor.color equals picked color, and color picker event dot invoke and we're passing in picked color. Once you have all this, we can go ahead and save it. We'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we'll look at the prefab that I've set up. Now for the prefab, I started with a UI button. I made it a square and I removed the text object. I've then added my script to this button. And we'll talk about the variables for this script in a second. But as child to this button, I've added a UI image and I've scaled that image up to 300 in the width and 400 in the height. For the source image field, we want to set this to the color chart. So we'll drag that in there. You can download this color chart from the post of this video on our website. I've then added the event trigger component and I've added the pointer click event type. For the functions of this event, we can drag our parent object into this first field and use the drop down menu to select our pick color function. We can then add another function and I've added this child object as the source. And we just want to select the game object set active function and we want to set it to false. We then want to add another child to this object and it's going to be a UI image. And the source image is just my white circle sprite. And this will be our cursor object. After this, we can duplicate this object and make the duplicated object a child to the first. And the only difference between these objects is that I've changed the width and height 
be 14 by 14. This will make the circle smaller and this will be the object that we fill in with the different colors that we select. Now once we have all these objects created for our prefab, we can go back up to the top parent object so we can set up the variables. Now first off in the button component, we want to add an on-click event, and we'll drag in the first child object, which is our color chart, and I'll use the drop-down menu to select the game object set active, and we want to set it to true. Now in our script, we want to fill in some of these variables. We'll leave our Unity event blank for now. For the color chart, we want to set it to the texture 2D asset that we have in our project window. For the chart, that'll be our first child object. For the cursor, it'll be the child underneath that. For the button, that'll be our parent object, and for the cursor Color, that'll be our bottom child object. Now once we have our prefab set up, we can go back to our Unity scene, and on a canvas object, we want to drag our prefab object onto the canvas. Now to make this game mechanic actually work, you're going to need to have another script to plug into the Unity event of our prefab. So I've gone ahead and created this demo script. Inside this demo script, all we need is a public void function, which I've called setColor, and this function needs to have a parameter of type color, which I've called new color. And inside this function, you can do whatever you want with the color that's being passed into the function. For this example, I'm just taking the material of the object that this script will be attached to and setting its base color. And so I have git component mesh renderer dot material dot color equals new color. Back inside Unity, I've set up the scene with just a ground plane and a cube object. On this cube object, I've attached a rigid body so that it'll fall and land on our ground plane, and then I've attached my demo script. After this, I can select my color picker prefab object, and in our Unity event, I can click the plus sign, drag in our cube object, then use the drop down menu to select demo color picker, and then set color. And when you do this, you want to select it from the dynamic color section. After this, you should have a working color picker. So here I have my cube, and if I click the button, my color picker chart opens and I can select any color and it'll color the button as well as my cube and the cursor. Now that's everything I'm going to cover in this lesson on how to create a color picker menu option in Unity. Now just as a reminder, you can get all the code for this lesson on our corresponding post. You can also download this as a Unity package for free on our store.